we made zero dollars in three months. <laughs> we went from like doing about 30K a month to zero, like literal zero. Um, when that happened, we had high overhead costs, like maintaining the bikes and the warehouse and all the software and the people that we had employed. Just had no income coming in at all. So, so I had to go into debt yeah. and figure it out. And then, but one thing that I did, which I'm really happy that I did, like I doubled down, you know, you know, when something bad happens, 95% of people, I think they're just like, oh, something Shit bad themselves. has happened. Yep. No, I'm not going to lose. And I was just reading Harvard business review things. And I was studying what companies that survived the 2008 financial crash did. Don't fire your best staff and double down on marketing. So that's what I did. Welcome to the Zevo show on the the show today we have Zach Duggan this man is a, a genius businessman he has those bikes that go around the um, city in Northbridge in Perth where people can go in the back of them and get a like a cheap ish ride um, can be a little bit subjective there I had a good time with them once my favorite story about it is on my bucks do mm. um, they dressed me up as Big Bird and oh, no uh, yeah one of the guys said let me give you a ride, Sevo. Big fan of me on the TikToks. Yeah. And, and then I was riding around Northbridge. I was standing. I was Ooh. drunk. Very, very, very dangerous. Who do I need to fire? And then I was uh, flying. I was oh, that's being, dope. I was being Flappy Bird. So, yeah. Zach, welcome to the show. Thanks for being hey, here. Thanks. Thanks for having me, man. It's really good. I like your little studio. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And um, for the viewers at home, we're actually uh, in between two ferns. So, Zach Galifianakis, uh, we're not copying. Um, My name is Zach, though. Exactly. So we, we've got that there. But, Zach, if you want to be the second Zach ever on the show, first the worst, second the best. Sorry, Zach. The Original. hard-hitting questions are coming, man. The hard-hitting questions are coming. <laughs> so um, for the audience, um, yeah. I just realized, by the way, fucking this is insane. I don't know if we can get this on camera, but I also have a Dragon oh, Ball. Oh, no way, bro. <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> we both have Dragon Balls <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I got what I've literally fuck? waited the last decade of my life waiting for to find somebody with another one. Just... I've never ever found anybody. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there on the angle too. Yeah. Do you know why I've you got, seven you got stars? number seven? I got number one. Ooh. If anyone's out there when looking for two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> what a moment. Do you know why it's seven stars for me? Um, because you're seven foot tall. And my name is Sevo. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, anyway, that's fucking sick. Yeah. I, I, I had a whole string of questions and I'm just like, well, fuck. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Let's start with Dragon Ball Z. So that means you're uh, Gen Y. Yeah, I'm 30, man. 30 years old. Yeah. Cheese TV. Can yeah. confirm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. Get up early, watch Pokemon, watch Dragon Ball Correct. Z. And I think that Dragon Ball Z actually changed my life. Okay, how's that? It was, it was all like eat healthy and go to the gym, like really good <laughs> stuff, you know. Who's and, your favorite character? Uh, Goku for sure. Correct. Yeah. 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 Yours? Correct. Um, I've got all of the little pop vinyl things. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had uh, Piccolo, yeah. uh, uh, Goku on the Nimbus. Bro, Piccolo just always died though, didn't he? <laughs> he just always. He's that reptile, just regenerates. <laughs> yeah. You, you know who's worse than Piccolo? Up. Fucking Krillin. Krillin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, legit died. He, he got rege regenerated so many times, revived by the dragon. Shenron. Yeah, and then he just respawned, <laughs> dead again. He <laughs> was the token. <laughs> Zero kill streak. <laughs> Yeah, his KD was like fucking negative four. What a block. Um, but yeah, no, nah, that that that's yeah. You just yeah. And I have my logo here. What else? Oh yeah. Um, I don't know if there's the oh, camera can see. Yeah. Anyway, I have that's right. my pedal logo. So yeah, you 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 got this business. Um, it wasn't a thing before you got it. Were you the first in Perth? How does that go about? Um, yeah, so kind of somewhat long story. There was a rickshaw business in the city in like 2010. Yeah. And it just went broke and like went horribly. And then they rented out the bikes to Southbound when Southbound was a thing. And then all the bikes like broke down. So when I went to the city of Perth, my idea, they were kind of like, oh, they did this before. It didn't work kind of thing. So it was, it t actually took me about six months to get it approved. Which was wow. like an, a really arduous process, like a lot of safety meetings and oh, like paying training permits and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But I actually came up with the idea when I was traveling around Europe. Oh, my. So I was like last semester of uni, I just got the opportunity to go to the Netherlands and study abroad for six months. And I saved up, I saved up about 30 grand and just absolutely sent it for a year in Europe. And then I just had so much fun that 
like as I was traveling around, I was like, I, don't, I can never work a normal job again. Like I just had too much fun. I was like, I can't do it to myself. There's no way. I can't work in office after this. No. So, um, yeah, I went in like Madrid and Berlin. I kept seeing all these rickshaws around and I was like, how has no one done that in Perth yet? And then I remember I just made a promise to myself that if I got back to Perth and nobody had done it yet, that I, I just had to. I had no yeah. other option. I just had to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. So six months of figuring it out, most people give up after the first rejection. What made you so sure that it was eventually going to be accepted but then going to work, uh, you know, on the basis of that it failed before? Um, I think I just didn't have a plan B, hey. I think that actually helped a lot. No contingency really, plan. I never really thought about that but, yeah, I just had no plan B. I was like this is happening no matter what and it was one of those things where I'm like this is happening and I actually like used the the whole like visualization thing a lot. Yeah. So I was dating this girl in – I was dating this Brazilian girl who lived. Yeah, in, the girls. She lived in Spain, oh. and I was in Australia, and I was just visualizing like her riding down the street on a rickshaw, and the girl was in Europe. I had no rickshaws, and I was just visualizing this every day, every day, every day. And then, yeah, a few months later, we got the permit. I bought, got the bikes from Newcastle, drove them across the Nullarbor, started up. How the big business. was the truck? Bro, it was like a big trailer with a van inside. And how many did you have? Five. Five yeah. to start with. And we slept inside the van, like on all the cushions for like five nights. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And how many helped you out there? Um, What do you mean? Uh, you said we. We slept. Oh, it was me and the girl. Oh, the girl, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. The, I bought the girl's ticket to come to Australia. Oh, I convinced okay. her to move to Australia. Yeah. For some reason I thought she was still in Spain. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah cool, yeah. Oh, I cool, didn't, cool I didn't connection there. <laughs> yeah, so she went like Brazil, Spain, Australia. Yeah. And then we went over to Newcastle, bought the bikes, drove them over the Nullarbor to Perth. And then, yeah, like I literally saw that thing that I've been like imagining yeah. for six months, man. Her, she was riding down, down the street and I was like, that's So how, cool. how old's the business now? Uh, so we started March 7th, 2017. Yeah. So we're just over six years now. And you obviously went through that uh, thing that everybody got sick on. We won't mention it because I don't want that tag on the uh, podcast. Yeah, it's um, that thing where so they that, closed all the things. Yeah, so that thing that yeah. closed all the things, how did you survive that? Uh, it was hard, man. It was very hard. So, I mean, being a rickshaw business that our driving force is hospitality, we yep. just got like, can I swear on this? Yeah, fucking shit. We got fucked in the ass by that. Hey, like we made... Zero dollars in three months. <laughs> we went from like doing about 30K a month to zero, like literal zero. And what's like the profit sort of thing? If, if, if you want to beat that question. Because we, have, um, because we have like over 20 young people employed and we have a fleet of 22 bikes now, it's not a very high profit margin in the business. Um, so obviously we try and keep our prices competitive because um, our main target market is families. Um, so it's just not a very profitable business at the end of the day. So um, when that happened, we had high overhead costs like maintaining the bikes and the warehouse and all the software and the people that we had employed. Um, and then, yeah, we just had no income coming in at all. So, so had to go into debt yeah. and figure it out. And then, But one thing that I did, which I'm really happy that I did, was I started reading, like I doubled down, you know. You know when something bad happens, like, 95% of people I think they're just like, oh, something bad has happened. Yep. So I think like most people over COVID, they just like went and watched Netflix for like six months. But I was like, no, I'm not going to lose. And I was just reading Harvard Business Review things and I was like, I was studying what companies that survived the 2008 financial crash did yep. and it was all like don't fire your best staff and double down on marketing. So that's what I did. I just I was like, I gave all my staff a bunch of tasks and because nobody was spending on ads, we just went ham on Facebook ads. Hey, so we just captured the whole market and we were getting like one cent clicks on our Facebook ads. Oof. So I just went super ham. Like yeah. you can't you can't get anything close to that anymore. But yeah. I was literally getting one cent clicks and like my ROAS was like 10 or 20. Fucking hell, ROAS. Yeah. Uh, return on ad spend for anybody who doesn't know yeah. is when you uh, – the amount you spend on an advertisement on Facebook, for example, and then the amount you make from that is the ROAS. So if you make times 10, you make times 10 your money. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you spend you, $1, you make 10. You make 10 bucks, which is ridiculous. That's huge. Yeah. And uh, I can relate to that because uh, – and, and, and I did it by accident because yeah. I, 
everybody was locked in and yeah. whatever and I was making content because I was already making content. I like making yeah. content. I was getting more into the short form video stuff because mm. no one else was doing it and I was getting bullied by my friends going, what the fuck are you doing on TikTok? Yeah, yeah. And then in that same time, I realized shortly after why it was going viral, everybody was at home. Yeah, they had nothing yeah. else to nobody do. had anything I to had, do. I had the audience. Like yeah. when I was still teaching at the peak of the, the lockdown, yeah. um, I had 20,000 kids stream live into me my maths lessons. I was a maths, maths lessons? Yeah, I was a maths school teacher. Bro. Yeah, man. And then um, and then I was like, hmm, well, what if I start talking about my wedding photography? Yeah, yeah. And then booked out two years yeah. organically in six months. Yeah, wow. And I just doubled down on that. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Like yeah. I did it, I was able to do it organically. So my role yeah. ass is like whatever the fuck the yeah, yeah, unlimited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just yeah. the time it took. Well, to that's why organic's so good, yeah, man. man. Yeah, man. I've and actually like, I've yeah. really changed my tune on that. I used to think paid ads was the go. Oh. But it, it's organic, man, is the it's way to go. Both if you know how to do both. Like yeah, yeah. my my overall But I think master yeah. organic first. Yes. Unless exactly. you're just like unless you got money to burn and yeah, you're just like exactly. you just want to blow up fast. And, and that's what I see a lot of brands do nowadays is they 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 go and use ad spend and they piss it up the wall. Mm. And the agencies are taking advantage of that. And I want to help There's change heaps that. of that, man. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, you know. And but but also at the same time these companies and brands that I help they struggle internally to make the organic content. Mm. And when I come in and help them, there is fucking gatekeeping, there's brand rejection. Oh, you can't post this, you can't post this. I'm like, mm. well, what can you post? Yeah. Then do it. Fucking post it then. Like if you want to, yeah. if you come, if I come in and help you and you tell yeah. me I can't post like this, yeah. Well, fucking do it yourself then, you know? I think and the root of the problem is that like people want like, all people want when they go online is to see authentic content. Yeah. But nobody wants to make authentic content. They don't know how. They're scared of getting rejected. They're scared of what their friends will think. They're scared of what their boss might think. Yeah. Their boss is scared that they're going to offend somebody, the HR department. <laughs> they said like, oh, yeah. we can't take any risks. It's a problem. And so like the bigger companies just put out like really like lame kind of stuff. Whereas like younger people that are just like, oh, I don't really care what people think. Yeah, you you can just you can make like huge headway like you have like yeah. what, you're like nearly a milli followers now on TikTok. One point six million. One point six. Yeah, yeah, getting there. Getting there. Getting yeah, there. and Hopefully. you like yeah. I mean this with all due respect, but you're not like super hot. Thank Do you. Do you know what I mean? You're not like I'm just hot. You're not like Ryan I'm Gosling or like uh, Margaret Robbie or something. I didn't shave today, so that's probably why. <laughs> but. Yeah, no, you know, you know I, like, I know we're what you both mean. like kind of average guys, yeah. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, average looking guy. Thanks. Um, I'll clip that. <laughs> very tall though, very tall yeah, ladies. T- tall, yeah. But also married. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. one person thinks I'm extremely hot. Yeah. Shout out to Sabine. <laughs> That's all you need. Um, really. What about you? Are you married? <laughs> nah, man. Single, well, unfortunately. Fucking, you're uglier then. Yeah. So. I, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I started a rickshaw business, bro. <laughs> So that's so the reason why it works is like it's it's being yourself. Yeah, that's yeah. the ultimate thing that you need to do online. Yeah. If you can be the ambassador of your own brand mm. and be yourself, you're almost all the way there already. Yeah. You just need volume of content. Yeah, yeah. Now the problem with brands and companies and businesses is they a lot of them they just want to make money. Yeah. They yeah. don't give a fuck. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, cool, excellent. But if you have the budget, hire a mascot. Yeah. And I'll teach your mascot how to fucking dominate the socials. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll teach you how to do the account management so that you know how to run the fucking shit. Yeah. And then when the organic starts really working, pump the ad dollars into the best performing shit. Yeah. And you will scale like no tomorrow. Like it's 100%. not hard in on in in theory, but the reason why people still don't do it is because yeah. they don't want to spend money on marketing yeah. or they don't want to put their – their, themselves in front of the camera, exactly. yeah, which yeah. saves them money, yeah. and they don't want to learn how to do it themselves. And I'm like, well, well, fuck, you have the time or you have the money, yeah. and if you have both, why not do all of it and I'll just come and help you? Yeah. That's really it. And the ones that have done it, yeah. like I have a guy, his name's Matt. He listens to this podcast, so yeah. shout-outs to Matthew. Shout-out, Matt. He, um, he, his, uh, his dad owns a, a bunch of uh, IGAs um, okay, out yeah. in the East. Yeah. Um, Fam group, shout out, massive plug, love your work. 
he hired me to come in and help him, yeah. right? To, to workshop with him. Yeah. Now his thing's got 55,000 followers. His IGA. His profile. IGA TikTok account has got 55,000 followers. And now what? kids go there yeah. to want to make TikToks with him. That's so cool, that's what man. The, that's fucking what happens yeah. when you listen to Sebo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have taken Sever's advice. Fuck so me, like you I know, everyone and does. it's just like it's frustrating because it's like I've done it, yeah, many times over, and there are times where I've failed with clients. Mm. I put my hand up straight away, yeah, yeah, and I don't like making excuses. But there's different things that happen throughout the journey. I'm like, no, you got to push past that. Oh, you, you you need to you need to make content like it's like it's on brand, like mm. it's it's you know it's it's chill and stuff. No one gives a fuck. It has to, oh, it's not like our Instagram content. I'm like, that's good. Yeah. I can put random shit on yeah, TikTok. Yeah. If I can put something that completely doesn't make sense. Our random stuff does way better. Like we can make like a really exactly. professional marketing no, video about a bar tour. Shit. And it will do so much worse than like me just telling some dumb story. Oh, man. Like honestly, like your content strategy is simply podcast at the back of the thing. Like you've already started yeah, doing yeah. that, which is sick. Yeah, yeah. Like, dude, I'll fucking go on a it just sounds like fun. And the yeah. whole thing is like, if you do it properly, you see the sites and people are like, oh, look, at where the fuck are they? Yeah, That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Go down to Fremantle for a day and yeah. shoot three or four different episodes. Yeah, yeah. And then just clip yeah. like golden moments where people talk about something. Yeah, yeah. And people go, what the fuck? I've never seen a podcast where they're on the back of a uh, like a bike thing. Yeah, yeah. And I already forgot what it's called. Pedal. Pedal. Yeah, yeah. No, you uh, said puddle. Puddle, yeah, yeah puddle. Yeah. The back of a puddle, like what the fuck? Where are they? Oh, they, I remember. I recognize that street. Yeah, yeah. They're not even listening to what you're saying, or they're listening to what you're saying, and then they go, "Fuck, this is an interesting and unique account. I'm gonna follow them." And then when they go out and about in Northbridge or wherever, they're like, mm. "Oh, there's one of those fucking puddle things I've seen that podcast yeah, from." Yeah. I'm going to go on it. I don't care. I'm just going to go for a drive because yeah. I love I love this. And then they want to just make an Instagram. So like, look, I'm on a fucking portal. Look, yeah. this is the podcast one. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's you know? how it works, eh? Hey? But businesses and brands that want to do it for some reason. It's just like I'm frustrated. Well, it's kind of good for us. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll take the market. Yeah. But I, I like I, – for me, I like to help other people. That's like, yeah, yeah. That's like one of my personal values. Mm. So like with my wedding stuff, I can just keep doing that for the next 20 years. Mm. But I got bored. Really quickly. I was I'm, like, I'm the same, man. You know? I, I think like, I don't know if that's like a creative ADD thing that, pe yeah. that people have. Like when you're creative, you just like, I, I have the same thing where like I really get my teeth into an idea or a business. And then once I've like got it to where I like, I want it to be, Yeah, I can like see the next five year plan, but I'm like, I, I, I yeah. don't want to do the legwork. But if know? it's challenging or if it's something that you're, that you're keen on, like mm. I see the five-year plan of what I'm doing now mm. and I'm like, holy shit, I'm keen. Yeah, because it's exciting and new. Yeah, right? and it's. But and I, it, I mean, like when you have a business and, yeah. and it becomes about like managing the staff yeah. and you know reducing your expenses well, yeah. and stuff like all that managerial yeah. stuff. Like oh, I had, I just um, don't enjoy it. I had a personal training business and I scaled it to fifty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, as a full-time uni student. Yeah, playing in the waffle. In the waffle. Yeah, West Australian football. Got you. Got you. So I had three things I was doing at the same time. Yeah. Main, I, I, I say this, but I could, I reckon I would have had a better bid at AFL yeah. had I not studied for uni or had my own personal training business. Yeah. But I leveraged my footy for the personal training business. Yeah. Like I play in the waffle. Yeah. I'm a good personal trainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my university degree yeah. was teaching and yeah. I had major in um, phys ed, yeah. which means I did a lot of units that required understanding of the human body, yeah. anatomy, yeah. biomechanics. Yes, you could talk the language. Yeah. And when I did the unit of biomechanics, yeah. I was like, holy fuck, the four, the cert for personal training degree that I got is, is nothing compared to what I know now. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, Jesus. And I sort of market in this. Mm. I was like looking at all these other personal trainers. I'm like, you guys are so basic. Mm. I didn't call them out or anything, but I was like, I see a point of difference here. Mm. I've got a university education about this tenfold and it sounds arrogant and cocky, but I'm like, I know more than you and I know the things that you're doing wrong. Yeah. That's because of the education, the extended education that I had. Yeah, yeah. And I became obsessed with it. Yeah. And I became, I talked about it. Yeah. And this is before fucking TikTok and shit. And all the good old days. Good all the, yeah, I got all the clients. Yeah. And then um, and then what happened next, coming back to the story of what we're talking about, yeah. I was like, you know what? 
I'm at the point now where I'm doing 50 sessions a week, mm. like like five to 10 sessions a week scattered throughout the days, morning, afternoon, half hour, 45 minutes. And then I was like, the next natural progression here is opening up my own gym, mm. hiring some PTs and uh, leasing out the space so they can use the equipment or whatever, yeah. so, uh, uh, subsidizing the rent. And then see if we can come up with a marketing strategy yeah. um, to so everybody wins. And I'm like, no, nah, fucking can't be bothered. And yeah, then, yeah, dude, that but, was it. But I think that like speaks to this point where you have to like you have to align what you're doing with your values yeah. because. And this speaks to like anybody who has a business, but especially to people that have a job. Like if you're like yeah. doing something you just don't align with, it's yeah. so much harder to. You feel like you have to like constantly like force yourself to do it. Yeah. But then when you find the thing that you're really excited about and it aligns with your passions yeah. and it's just like so effortless, you yeah. know, it's so hard to describe that to people. But like you've got the flow. Yeah. Like when you get in that flow. flow, you just do a 12 yeah. hour day like it's nothing. Oh man, that's Whereas every like day. An now. eight hour day for a job that you hate just feels like torture. Oh man. That's but like, yeah. I, like working eight hours a week <sighs> in, in a business I love is, is so easy. <laughs> exactly. So easy. So if I was a PT now, and I know what I know now with TikTok, with Instagram, with digital assets, yeah, with yeah. online shit. Yeah. Back then, I would have not started my own gym. Yeah. I would have gone hard online. Yeah. Kind of like Kayla Itzini's did back in the day. She yeah, was like yeah. one of the first. Yeah. She fucking ended up making an app and sold it for like, I think it was like four hundred million dollars or some shit. Four hundred million. It was either one hundred forty million or four hundred million. Yeah, yeah. I think this is one of those things that um, old mate can look up. Thoughts? Yeah. Uh, I have a question What's for. That? Uh, Kayla Etzini's, how much did she sell her app for? So she was a 21-year-old personal trainer, yeah, quote yeah. unquote, yeah. and she was selling an $80. And this is this is me just remembering it. Don't quote me, paraphrasing, whatever. And she was selling an $80 package, like a yeah. workout, yeah. universally yeah. to people. And because she leveraged Instagram early, yeah. she had so many followers. I had mate sisters who were going, oh, my God, I bought the Kayla Etzini's yeah, fucking yeah. thing. And I'm like, back then I was a PT. I'm like, how is that? How is that tailored to someone's wants and needs? But she didn't give a fuck. Oh, she, girl, she just like marketed. girls market to girls. Dude, that you know? is the secret. That is like the business secret that nobody ever talks about. <laughs> that is the source. Like, eighty percent of purchasing decisions are made by women. Well, that's why wedding photography worked for me. Mm, yeah. They they liked me. They You're found not me funny. For the husbands, hey? Yeah, and yeah. you know they're getting they're marrying someone yeah. else, so I didn't have to be hot. You know, yeah. and their husbands. Um, to be, we're like, oh, he's not hot. That's all right. <laughs> he's, no, he's no threat. Hey? Oh. You're no threat to them. <laughs> yeah, no threat, no threat. Uh, Kayla says, it says here she's now worth $486 million. Here you go, $486 million. And Half I was, a billion dollars yeah, from and, posting on Instagram. <laughs> well, posting on Instagram but selling digital assets. Yeah, yeah, monetizing. Right? Yeah. So what I should have done back then was do the same thing mm. with what I knew. Mm. And just fucking go, go ham with that. Yeah. But when you're uh, her, no disrespect to all her success, you're a good looking young chick who's genetically blessed and doesn't have to try hard at the gym anyway. Yeah. And have a completely like all time marketing team and all of that backing you behind yeah. you and to just push you forward. Mm. And then that is the result. So if I did that, fuck, fuck knows where I'd be right now. But now with wedding photography and shit, yeah. um, what I do there was I scaled it in three years. Yeah. I can make those digital assets and go, this is how you brand for a wedding photographer. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is how you brand as a wedding vendor in general. Yeah, yeah. And I'm doing a talk this weekend at a, a, a wedding thing. Yeah, keep got Telling you. people how to yeah. do it. My problem is I haven't until last week on the – I went to a, on a trip to Queensland, North Queensland yeah. through Sony. Okay. I met so many people that have digital assets yeah. that are making so much money. Yeah. And for me, money is – it is a driving factor, you know. It, yeah. it, is, it is fun to make lots of money. But it's the, it's the art of the deal. It's the art of the hustle. It's the, it's the close. It's the how many people can I convince to buy this from? Yeah, yeah. And my biggest barrier before was will this be valuable – will this actually be valuable to them? Mm. Well, if I convince them and they buy it and it's not for them – I mean, there's a refund thing or whatever, mm. but most people, ever since I'd done any business, they were like, "Yeah, that was fucking sick." Yeah, yeah, yeah so 100%. I'm, I've always been worrying about like the fear of failure, yeah. imposter syndrome, which I've completely got over now. Yeah, but also like, um, will this work? Will people think it's good? Mm. 
I mean, it's still their decision at the end to press purchase. Yeah, yeah. And like I, for me, there's like, always that doubt. Hey, when you launch something doubt. new, you're like, is anyone going to buy this? Yeah, exactly. And then somebody buys it, you're like, thank but God. When, but when 100 people buy it, yeah. I naturally want to know every single person and go, all right, has this worked for you? Mm. I think it's like a teacher thing back in the day where yeah, my, my, yeah, my yeah, students, true. my 32 students in the class, I'm like, all right, you guys good? You guys yeah. good? And then get the results back of, of the, when I'm checking for understanding. Yeah, yeah. I hate the word test. And then one of them doesn't get it. And I'm like, is that me? Yeah. Or is it them? And that's kind of like a pain point I've always had. Mm. But now I'm starting to really get over that and go, you know what? This is what's worked. This is what's worked for them. This, yeah. is, this is testimonials and shit. Yeah. Here it is. If you yeah. want it, grab it. If you don't want it, well, yeah. fucking good luck, you know? Yeah. So that sort of meticulousness that you're talking about is really important in business, I think. Oh, man. That attention to detail and like following up with your first 100 yeah. customers. Like, yeah. if you can do that, it's 90% of the battle. But that's what Kayla did. And I'm assuming that's what she did. And, mm. and she just killed it. So I remember that back early in the days. Yeah, yeah. And, and back then I was hating. I was hating. I was like, she's not, she's not like giving a tailored workout to someone. Yeah. yeah. No one ever said she did. Yeah. And then she obviously had an upsell. Like if you want to be trained by Kayla, she yeah. she would have she would have had yeah, like a yeah, premium yeah. package or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And now she's probably I don't know living in Bali or yeah, something. She's probably like Beyonce's like <laughs> trainer or something. Uh, yeah. Quick correction: it was only seventy million. What? Seventy. It was only seventy. Seventy million. I would still say yes to seventy million. You know. Okay, I have a question for you. Go on, Sam. Because I think about this. Would you? Okay, so remember that guy from Facebook, right? Mark Zuckerberg. Facebook. Tom. That's MySpace. MySpace. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. MySpace. I got my, my social media is confu uh, confused. <laughs> yes. But okay. I so know his story. The, the MySpace guy. Yes. He just got the money and was and just left. So my question is, would you rather be like the guy that just gets the 200 million and just leaves or would you rather have like the $100 billion empire like Zuck? So why would I want the $100 billion empire is the question. Um, I don't need it. Yeah. And I don't want it. Yeah, yeah. So I would, uh, I said this to everyone that I work with or works yeah. with me. I say my, my target goal is 2 million. Yeah. 2 million invested. Yeah. Not 2 million saved, 2 million invested. Yeah. Because 2 million invested um, in the right portfolio yeah. gets you around if, if 4 to 5% yeah. um, dividends every yeah. year. Yeah. It's about 70, 80, 90,000, depending on who you invested in and inflation. Right? Yeah. That covers my basic cost of living. Yeah. I don't have to do anything for the rest of my life. Yeah. And then from there, I'm playing with play money. I'm going to start a fucking cafe or whatever. As long yeah. as it's not a colossal fuck up. Yeah. yeah. And that <laughs> exactly, two million yeah. is never touched, which also compounds over time. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't and, need and 70 right, million. Like you would just go and do more fun projects. Like, exactly. I think the whole like you go and drink margaritas on the beach in Fiji. For I mean, you could do life. that too. But that's just like so dumb. It'd be so I mean, you get bored of it. So, yeah. so what Tom did. Tom from MySpace, he actually sold his. I think it was like fuck. It was it was, it was nine figures, low nine figures. Yeah, you know the the hundred mil plus. Uh, I think it was one hundred and forty, one hundred and fifty. Yeah, and that was back then too. That's a yeah. lot. And now all he does, you can follow him on um, Instagram. Yeah, he he's actually making taking some insane images like photography. He just yeah. he's a photographer. He yeah. just goes and takes photos and tells stories. That's cool. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm like, that's that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. Like I started my journey in 2015 when I had my ACL mm. done in my as a as a footy player. Yeah. And then I was like, well, fuck, I'm done for 12 months. What do I do? Yeah. Got a DSLR, started taking photos of my sneakers because yeah. I was a sneakerhead. Yeah. And then true. I was like, You're a big sneakerhead. And then I was like, yeah, because you know. And then I was like, fuck. Uh, well, what else can I take photos of? Mm. Took photos of birds. Learned how to focus. Yeah. Took photos of landscapes. Yeah. Then got into people I'm like yeah. you know what let's put a person in this photo yeah loved street photography yeah and then from street photography became portraits yeah and then from portraits became weddings yeah because if you can pose a model you can pose a bride yeah and yeah. that's a valuable skill yeah and as well you, you can yeah. charge a good hourly rate for it exactly yeah. but also with that the commercialized side of it mm. i actually don't like it i don't want to do something for someone else that is a creative thing yeah. unless I have 100% creative control yeah. and they are super happy with the final product, no yeah. revisions. If I can do that, great. I'll do that for, for money. Yeah. Otherwise, 
I'm not going on an assignment and yeah. have to do something. I just want to fucking go out there and take a photo of something I like. Yeah. And if someone wants to buy it, great. If yeah. someone doesn't want to buy it, I don't give a fuck. But yeah, that, I'm, I completely agree with you. Hey, because yeah. my point on that is like I would do the same. I'd get the like few milli and just like I, like I just go move to an island entirely. You have house Get money. a nice house. Yeah. And then just chill, yeah. you know. And I, if you get bored. Yeah. Like, I mean, people don't get this until later on in life yeah. if they're lucky as well. Because yeah. 75% of people in Australia, um, when they retire, yeah. they rely on the pension. Really? Yep, three and four people. That's a sad stat. Yep. We're one of the richest countries in the world as well. Yeah. There's a worse stat than that. What is it? And what happens four years after they retire? They die. Uh, <laughs> no. So four years after someone retires. Turn 69. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah. So four years after they retire, this is a census stat, 63, uh, 90, no, 96.3% of Australians, yeah. four years after they retire, have to downgrade their lifestyle. Oh. Four years after 96%. they retire. 96%. 96.3. Oh, don't try and make me Google that. Isn't that so That's a sad, fact. dude? That's a fact. You don't have to yeah. Google it. So what happens And they all got told like the Australian dream, you know. Like, yeah, the Australian mom, dream. Like, my mum's barely left the country. Yeah, your superannuation is like running 55. out. And now she's like 55. Like yeah. if she travelled, there's no way she'd have as much fun as like a 20-year-old in Mykonos, you know. Like. Well, that's what I mean. And, and the reason for that is there's no education behind what you should think about. You don't have to do it. What you, you should think about from 15 on. So f from 15, you need to think about what you need to invest in and how to invest. Yeah, Not yeah. save money. But, you know, you can live life and buy dumb shit or whatever. Yeah. But honestly, if you – if you realize this now, by yeah. the time you're 30, you're going to be fucking super well off. Oh, bro, yeah. And you, you have – I, I had yeah. 10 grand when I turned 18 and I remember looking at Bitcoin and being like, that would be a good investment. It was $100 a coin. And I was like, nah. And then I just <laughs> went and just like went clubbing and just wasted all my money. Yeah, everyone's got a story. Everyone's got a Bitcoin story. Yeah. But Every, my biggest everybody. advice to anyone who's like around like 17, 18 is like, don't waste your time in these clubs, hey. Like, just go travel, find what you love to do. Exactly. And just, like, oh, exactly. like, alcohol and partying is probably the most overrated thing in our whole culture. Exactly. And that's, like, um, one of my recent clients um, that uh, we parted ways with. Mm. Um, the original um, idea was for me to be an ambassador to yeah. help them. Yeah. Um, you know, put my face in front of the the, the image. Yeah. And but But then... I'm glad they didn't say yes to it because then I realized after that it's promoting that sort of uh, a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. And I would have kind of flipped it to more of like an educational sort of in moderation and all of that shit. Mm. But the bottom line is I actually just want to teach people to go, right, you hit 18, do not waste your money in clubs. Mm. Waste your money or invest your money in yeah. education. Yeah. If you can put it in shares, great. If you could do both, even better. Yeah. Because five years later, that $300 you would have spent otherwise in a club yeah. on overpriced fucking drinks, yeah. you would have spent a quarter of that in your house with your friends all safe and in the music you wanted to fucking play. Yeah. yeah. You, you were chasing like, after some five in the club. <laughs> my God, you know, and like it's, it's uh, you don't realize it back then because no one's talking about it. Yeah. Right? And it so, seems so cool. Like when you're 18, like clubbing just seems yeah. so damn cool. Well, yeah, for sure because that's how they market it, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm so glad of where I am now. No regrets at all. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I could have been a walking contradiction. I would be teaching people one thing yeah. and saying and, and promoting the complete opposite. What as do you a, mean as a marketing by that? Like at, so when I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I had a fast food client and yeah. I was helping them and I was, monitor, I was doing their, their socials. Chicken the, treat. It's close, yeah. um, but I was I was doing the I was doing the the TikTok right, yeah. and I was putting my face in front of it sometimes. Now yeah. I wouldn't really be eating the carby stuff. I would be eating the fried chicken. Yeah. You know? Oh, chicken, it's okay. But then I learned about seed oils, vegetable oils, Bro. and how fucking bad they are. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, holy shit! I've I've weeded off seed oils completely. Yeah, same, same. Holy fucking shit! And you you don't even realize how much of seed oils. Seed oils and vegetable oils is the yeah. same thing. Look it up. Yeah. And it is so bad for you. Yeah. Like whole like – And no got, one even talks about it. Like, dude, if you go to the canola fucking council website in yeah. Australia and then the, the cancer council website and you look up the vegetable oils, they talk about 
that it's the best and healthiest oil. I don't know, it gets oil. like the little heart. Tea. Complete bullshit. <laughs> it's like, what? Complete bullshit. Yeah, yeah. You know, but olive they, oil. They like they say like coconut oil is bad for you. No, coconut's fine. Olive oil's fine, and the best oil to cook in is actually animal uh, beef fat. Ghee. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghee is the best. You, yeah. you can actually even this butter. This butter is great. Yeah, but you can reuse it as well. Yeah, true. You can reuse it as long as you filter it through. You can yeah. reuse it. But yeah. it, it's expensive. So canola oil. So if you go – and this is why I don't eat uh, as many chicken wings anymore yeah, in my yeah. content un- unless it's the de- uh, air fried stuff at home. This is real. This is fucking real. He stopped eating chicken wings. Like, exactly. That's a big sacrifice But that's what I mean. Like I'm, I'm so glad that I'm not um, branded or, or help that account anymore Yeah. because it doesn't align with my values. Yeah. Same with my uh, – a recent client with the clubbing stuff. Yeah. It actually doesn't align with my values. I don't want to fucking go out and spend yeah. money on drinks. So why would I help someone promote it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there were there were brands in that that were good, like like that that I kind of resonated with, yeah. like going out with friends for yeah. a quiet one or a couple. Yeah. But fucking get home by eleven because yeah, yeah, yeah. you have a whole like grind that you want to do in the morning not be hung over and steal the happiness from the next day just so you can have a fucking epic night yeah and then get the uber eats and then you sleep in on sunday and then you're tired on monday the uber eats with the seed oils and then your tuesday's ruined and then you finally start feeling good on wednesday and then you do it all again friday like you you cook it for yourself again. and then by the time you're 30 you're going what the fuck why am i stuck in this shitty job with this shitty salary and this fucking mortgage with these inflation rates going up the roof. What the fuck happened? I thought this was the dream. My parents yeah, did it. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a big thing for me when I realized like the system is like not, like doesn't want to help you kind yeah. of thing. This is like, yeah, like buy a house, like buy a house. Interest rates are really cheap. And then all those incentives they, like, encourage all these young yeah. people to like get into the market and then they're just like Burr! 14 <laughs> like interest rate oh sorry that's so loud 14 like rip headphones 14, <laughs> 14 <laughs> interest rate rises in a year like Bro. and then your loans doubled yeah. and your wages have gone up like three percent all right so we've it's got so rude so we're talking about what's happened Mm. and i have no idea where we went from from the original question i asked but i love this uh this series of uh things that we've Sorry, talked I about have a lot of add i love it i love it i love it i love it so what about yourself you you mentioned that you weren't making any money uh for three months during old mate old mate yeah. flu season yeah old mate flu season yeah so, so how did you survive so i doubled down right so i well i mean i had to go get a huge loan at some ridiculous interest rate but how did you how did you make the money back and repay your debts mm. and have a ROAS when people went booking your bike. So this doesn't make sense. So what we did was, we, I mean, the, those three months we were just getting ready. So it was like, how do we make the website better? Let's work on our brand. Let's, you know, redesign our colors and our fonts. And we like, you know, all that stuff. I'm yeah. sure you know all that stuff. Yeah. You wish you could do, but you just don't have time. Yeah. We did all that stuff. I mean... That's that's what you got to do. Yeah. So we just we just like we just plugged all the holes and yeah. You know, I cut down every expense as, as like I called every single person that we had a uh, an expense you know that yeah. we had to pay, and um and just you know got negotiated deals and yeah. half price things until X, um and then as soon as it looked like like oh hey this is opening up we were just like pulled the trigger on the ads and we're like you know forty nine dollar scavenger hunt book now. You know, everyone get outside. You've got to wear your mask and you bring your piece of paper that proves nothing. <laughs> um, but like, you know, let's get outside. Let's have some fun. And so we were the first to a company in WA to just be like, let's do this. Yeah. And so, yeah, from it's day to day, like as soon as uh, the lockdown finished. Would you be a lot better off now if it happened again? What do you mean? Like let's say old mate flu season came back in yeah. a different way with a vengeance and then um, – uh, Professor Captain Cook said, "Yep, yeah, we're gonna all oh, hide away again." Yeah. How would you do it differently, or what would you do? Honestly, man, like if you are, uh, my honest opinion on that is that if that was happening again, I would just book the first flight out of here. Hey. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> I just. Where uh, would you go? Probably Phuket. Phuket. Yeah. Fucking, I love Phuket. Yeah, I got like two two really good mates in Phuket. 
Like, if there was going to be a lockdown, I just want to be, like, riding around Phuket on a little scooter. Just up and down Bangla Road. Oh, bro, That's it. yeah. And, and I could just start a little, like, vlog and... Yep. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'll come with you. Yeah. Bring my like, wife. That whole lockdown thing, man, you can see it actually makes me a bit sad, you know, because I walk around it seems like in the last three years, like, everyone just got a little bit sadder, a little yeah. bit more overweight, you know. Like, yeah, it really yeah, yeah. did a number on a lot of people. That's it. That's it. Except for your staff. They're all fucking... Pedaling. Oh, bro, yeah, we're so fit. Look at these legs. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one thing I, I, I want to talk about next is the business um, plan yeah. in terms of uh, having like a, a safety net yeah. of, oh, shit, I'm not getting much business, yeah. but I can survive because I didn't go razor thin margins yeah. and I have a safety bucket. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's kind of what I, what I wanted to do with uh, talk to you about if, mm. if uh, that flu season came back. Yeah. You can survive for six to 12 months yeah. because you have that emergency money. Yeah, yeah. Is that something that you're thinking about now as well? Yeah, definitely. Well, like it, to be honest, well, like I'm looking at exiting. Pedals, okay. So it's actually on the market and um, I'm looking to sell in the next few months. Yep. So yeah, I want to get out, out of that for about 250 odd yep. and move on to the next, the next adventure. But what are you thinking? Um, I'm doing like a little e-commerce product. I'll show you okay. afterwards. Yeah, okay. it's called Bottle Bud. Oh, it's just like a little. It's like a little car accessory adapter. Cause everyone's got their like little Frank Green bottles yeah. now, so, but they don't fit in your center console. Okay, so just a little product that. Feel that. Um, Can you just go to Bunnings and get the old PVC pipe? Yeah, yeah, but we we support plumbers, man. Like. So many plumbers are coming to me just saying like they go to they go they got to get their storm drain and yeah. like some like eighteen year old TikTok has stolen all their parts and then they have to like charge an old lady double. So not only are we helping young people, but we're helping tradies. Yeah, I'm sure you have fun colors. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you got to match the bottles. bottles. Yeah, it yeah, matches the bottles. Yeah, you, you got to get, get that three D printing engraved. 3D printing going. Oh, I've bro, seen it's a lot harder of that. than you think. Hey, three D printing's like really. Hard. Have, you, have you tried it? Yeah, we tried getting a few 3D printed, but it's very hard. Yeah. It's either like too expensive or the like you can't get like a nice rounded surface. Yeah. yeah we just went old school and, you know, went to China, found a supplier, mold. We got like 2,000 products shipping here soon. So how do you figure that shit out? Like where do you start to go, all right, I've got a product here. We're going to put it inside a car, send a console. Yeah. Where do you like go then from there? Like from that to – Calling someone in China. Yeah. What do you do? Um, a lot of Googling. A yeah, a lot, lot of, of Googling. Googling. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't, I don't think I'm very smart and I, I'm not very focused either. I just, I just enjoy taking risks, I think. So I'm like, oh, that's a problem. And then I, what I like to do is I'll ask some people around me, like I'll just call a few friends and be like, you know, if, if I made this, would you buy it kind of thing? Because I think the worst thing you can do is just start making something without actually justifying that there's a market. Yeah. That's where most people go wrong in business. They like build an amazing cafe, but no one gives a shit. Nobody nobody wants coffee in that suburb or whatever. Yeah. Um so yeah, like step one is just test test the market. Test the market. Step two is just start doing research. Yeah. Uh in my case it was going to Alibaba and messaging people and then it was you know, yeah, um, you start talking about it, and yeah. then if people go, Oh, yeah, so that's the beginning, yeah, yeah, and then go, What if this and this and this? and they go, Oh, yeah, like, fuck yeah, it, that's sick. Like, I got something brewing up here with, um, with uh, the, the lead coding guru of a man, Jamal. Yeah, he, um, we've got this AI, um, tool that yeah, literally yeah. you put in either a, a PDF or a like a slideshow yeah. or like a downloadable thing from your mm. brand. Or your business, yeah. Or just get your website, yeah. Or if you don't have any any of those for some reason, you describe what it is yeah, that yeah. you actually have or yeah. do, and then it creates four of your key brand pillars, which yeah. are universal for any brand. Yeah. What problem do you solve? Why yeah. do you want to solve it? Who your target audience is, and yeah. who are your other horizon people? Yeah. Who yeah. aren't your target audience? Yeah. But you can still market to them yeah. just in case they know someone. Yeah. And oh, that's important. I, I love doing the avatar thing. Hey, yeah. like just dream up like, yeah. like her name's Stacy and she's yeah. 24 and she has like a shell tattooed on her wrist yeah. and she drives a Suzuki Swift oh. and like she, she wants to go to Xmouth this yeah. winter. And like, you got to know how to talk to those people. Yeah, you get like a really yeah. like, you imagine it, you're not just like 30 to 40 year old women that have hair. Like you really <laughs> like 
define that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you like make content, you're speaking to that exactly. person. Exactly. Because too much content is just, they're just like speaking to like anyone, everybody. And, yeah. They're like, hey, broad. hey, everybody. Um, my product is is good. It's made out of uh, wood and it's it works. Buy it, please. Yeah. So we're developing this thing where it goes from the actual brand like website or whatever. Yeah. Then yeah. goes into ideas. Okay. And then it goes into uh, scripts of content. And oh, all you have to okay. do is record it. So it will give you a TikTok script. Will it give you like frames and stuff? Yep. Shots? Yep. That's awesome. Narration, text, everything. Damn, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's built on chat GPT? Uh, yeah, it's using API. Yeah. And sweet. then um, we're going through different codings and stuff. We're migrating um, the coding language and, yeah, hard coding it. And then uh, – How's engineering the prompt, hey? It's pretty yeah. fun. You're giving away a bit of IP here, just uh, heads up. That's right. That's yeah. right. We're not going too deep into it. Yeah. But, yeah, so um, – Most people just would like – Everyone has an idea, but no one ever makes the business. Well, exactly. Like I give away everything for free. Yeah. No, well, less than one percent that will hear this will actually go, "Oh shit, I should do that too." And then less than one percent of that will actually try. Yeah. So I don't give a fuck. Yeah. But like with this, it's it's just been months and months of teaching people. But then when AI came out, I was like, "Holy fuck, I can do this quicker." Yeah. yeah. But then showing people how to do it quicker. Yeah. And then for them still being non capable of doing that yeah. going can we do this easier again yeah so if this doesn't work may god have mercy on their souls mm. because well man, next up you could maybe do like a content planner like, yeah like it will make you 30 days and then that yeah. auto puts it into like uh because the way we plan our content is that we have like it's basically just like yeah a table with like the post and yeah. the, the script. Yeah, so but that's just, that's the posting like, part. That's yeah, the posting yeah. part. So we're talking about the generating part. Yeah, no, the, that's what I mean. But yeah. you generate it, you put it all into the post with the captions and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you could, if you wanted to make it really easy, this is like a little like load bar where you just load the video onto it. That's <laughs> something where we're – that. So you've got like uh, apps like Later. Yeah. That's kind of like that. Yeah. We integrated that into it. Yeah, you know, way. Sweet. Um, editing is getting so much more anim um, uh, automated. Yeah, how are you doing editing? So, I mean, we've got people. Yeah. Um, we've you just also get some got young guns, kind of thing. Yeah, I train them to be young guns. Yeah. You know, um, but uh, a lot of the time, it's finding AI tools that speed up, like make things five seconds quicker. Yeah. And then you do that again and again and again. Eventually, that five seconds becomes a whole minute, and then that whole minute becomes an hour. Yeah. And then in that hour, you you instead of outputting one or two video edits, you're outputting ten video edits per hour. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you using CapCut? Yeah, CapCut, Premiere Pro. Yeah, we've got Descript, um, and then there's one called Opus AI. Yeah, Opus is sick. Yeah, Opus, Opus AI is, is sick. It's not quite perfect, but that's because we're um, creators ourselves. But to, uh, to the uh, general MPC audience, um, it's amazing. It's really fucking cool. But we're trying to do it internally because then you have XLR uh, outputs, which mm. means it's non-destructive. And when you put it into Premiere Pro, for example, you can play with it further. Mm. There's already an app called Gling, G-L-I-N-G, that can do that. Yeah, Cuts okay. the fat. Yeah. So all the pauses and stuff. Yeah. And then you put that into Premiere Pro or whatever as an XLR yeah. and automatically has it all cut just yeah. like the app did and it's non-destructive so you can play around with it. Yeah. Then you've got your uh, transcript, bang. If yeah. you have a, have a template for your transcript, bang. Yeah. We did a, a talking head video that took – it's about ooh, two to three minutes of uh, recording. Yeah. Brought it down to about 40 seconds of footage. Yeah. All transcribed, all ready to go, and took us less than five minutes. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, once so, you get your processes dialed in, it's yeah, yeah, easy. Yeah. Hey. So now it's just a matter of can we get a client for 100 videos yeah. and then output those 100 videos in less than a day or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But the thing is like you still have to kind of be diverse in those 100 videos. It can't just be that same flow. You have to have different styles. Yeah. It has to be like a skit or a meme or, yeah. you know, Generally, it's about four to five pillars. Yeah. So like, for example, your business, you'd be like that, that podcast on yeah. the back. But then you'd have your driver doing like a meme. Maybe you talk about something in the area, like talking about Perth itself. Mm. So get, you know, tourism coming to Perth. Yeah. Because if you do a really cool tourism video for whatever reason, yeah, yeah. Um, people come to Perth and go, fuck, 
I'm going to Perth because of that one business. Yeah. All of a sudden you're a hero to Western Australia and you're a hero to them because then you're like, oh, I've got to go on them now. Yeah. Like yeah. I like bully uh the bulldog in Amsterdam. I saw their content. It's yeah, the okay. it's the cupcake shop. Yeah. You know the one? What I kind was like of cupcakes? I fun ones. Cream um, cheese. Yeah. So I was like, as soon as I got there for the first time, I was like, I need to go to the Bulldog. Yeah, true, true. And then the Heineken factory. I always loved Heineken. I was yeah. like, fuck, I'm here. I'm going to go to the Heineken factory. Yeah. It's the same with you guys. It's like I want to go on one of those bikes. Yeah. Even if it if it's, if it's exists in their country, yeah. they want to fucking go to here and go, well, I'm here. I have to go on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Become the tourist destination hotspot. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Have your pick of your choosing. Yeah, and it's making that content appealing and consistency is such a big thing as well. Well, that's, hey. that's what it's this just does. Like, it's not just showing up once, it's like showing yeah. up. Because I, I find that I'll see somebody but I won't take that much notice but it's when I see that like the fourth or fifth time Yeah. and I'm like, oh, that was valuable to me. They made me laugh. It was entertaining. That's and then the I'm consistency. Like, and I'm like, I like this person. Yeah, you got to nurture. But I'll just go smash like four hours of YouTube content of theirs, you know. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. then... And then if there's a, C, a a right CTA or a product in there, yeah. you feel obligated to purchase because they've helped you so much. Exactly, yeah. So. Whereas you don't have that with an ad, you know, like you never no. see an ad and you're like, oh, I'm going to go watch four hours of YouTube and buy this no. person the like problem 10, with yeah. course. The problem with ads is they they ask you or they, they, they say, hey, you have to watch this and hey, you have to – you should make this purchase. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah. But if you can hide it as an organic piece of content and then be consistent with that over time, yeah. the best performing ones, you can repurpose them as ads by putting yeah. more ad spend behind them and in a fucking way. Yeah. Easy. I, I said this already before, but that is that is the slam dunk formula. Yeah. And the reason why people are failing and wasting money with agencies and in their brands is I think that's gonna die. Soon, that, it hey? is dying. Yeah. So the ads, so uh, agency comes in and goes, hey, we've got a campaign for you. Curse word for me is a campaign. There's no such thing as a campaign. It should be l lifetime campaign. Mm. The lifetime campaign is the organic strategy. From that come mini campaigns that sprouted from all the testing from consistency you've done with your mm. organic content. That's the mini campaigns. Look, look how many people love this viral video. Mm. Let's keep pumping it so that everybody else can see it too. But let's target it. To the right people. Yeah. The human element has already been proven. Yeah. They love the video. Let's target it to people that are most likely to purchase. Yeah. Away you go. I think paid ads works in a personal context. Mm. Like if you're like a Ty Lopez or a Billy Jean, paid ads make sense. Yeah. Whereas if you're like KFC, it's all brand. Like brand is, is what you have to monetize. Yeah. Like Nike doesn't, like I've never seen a Nike ad on social media but it's just their brand they're like when i think well about they've it, done it right they're just like it's like just do it yep. on, yeah or like one oh, yeah. yeah well like tesla they never do yeah. paid ads the their brand is just like elon musk saying like wild base shit yeah on twitter yeah commit to dogecoin yeah so i had um i had a couple of agencies that i remember i'm not gonna mention anyone but their clients were like spent 100 grand in three months and they cannot prove that it worked and the, grand. Yeah, the problem is they, they pitch an idea. Mm. They go, hey, we're going to create this creative and it's going to be sick and we're going to do this with it, this with it, this with it. Yeah. There's a local marketing agency I know for a fact that's actually a, a media like buying agency that like yeah. you, you can purchase stuff to put on their website because they've yeah. got so many hits. Yeah. They actually charge over seven grand for one video for each of the three platforms and all they – they can tell tell you is how many eyes eyeballs yeah, will be yeah, on. Impressions. I'm like, like oh. fucking bullshit, man. Yeah, yeah. What about the engagement? What what is the guarantee? Where yeah. what is the ROAS? There's I've no. Seen, I've seen some companies they'll sell like a Facebook post, bro, for like a grand, bro. And it's like it's like organic Facebook hasn't been good for yeah. like ten years. But that's why I don't want to work as a content creator doing collaborations anymore because mm. I feel guilty. I feel guilty going. That's two and a half grand for me to post this video. Mm. You'll get thousands of views. But I can't guarantee you, you make your money back through actual sales. Yeah, yeah. But the agencies that hire me, yeah, they hire me. And then, I mean, I've, I've had multiple companies come back to me and go, we'd like to hire you again this year, like yeah. eTax, for example. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck yeah, it worked. Can you give me stats? And all the stats that uh, they gave me were like the, the met, uh, vanity metrics. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but how, 
how do you measure yeah. if it actually worked? Like mm. how many onboardings do you – how do you tell that to your client? Yeah. And that's where I discovered that there's a gap. Maybe that's where AI will come in and you'll be able to – maybe in the future you'll be able to see like 20 – like these 20,000 people all watch that yeah. video and – in the next six months, you know, like three percent bought it. And so I know, would love to know $2, that start. Two thousand dollar video, six thousand yeah. dollar sales. But it's it's always been the million dollar question, right? And exactly, age, yeah, like is con like how yeah. does content monetize? But I want to empower yeah. the 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 clients, the actual brands, to go. All right, if we get this person and we pay them three grand for these videos mm. and we post them organically on our site, yeah, how do we measure that those exact videos? Um, got us bookings or yeah. purchases or yeah. whatever. You can't unless yeah. you put ad spend behind it yeah. and it's gen genuinely from the video, people clicked it and made the purchase and you can have that evidence. But Or there's like promo codes, I guess. Like, promo codes, yeah. Like Sev. Affiliation and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You, and use code SEV when you go to yeah. Chicken Treat or whatever. And but there's too many fucking... $2 off your chicken <laughs> and then... And then yeah. Chicken Tree can say, oh, like we, you know, $10,000 yeah. was made. But I mean, the thing the is people you work from averages. They, they work from like, oh, well, it has to be part of the package. It has to be part of the package. We could see a spike when this happened yeah. and they leverage those. Well, marketing agencies, I've noticed what they do is they generally don't give – like I work with Aligned Agency and they are incredible, like really, really, really good top-notch, probably the best one of the best agencies in Perth. But like the average agency, they might just – they will use a lot of like technical jargon to confuse people because people obviously don't want to think about the complexities of SEO. Yeah. So they'll just get sold like this $10,000 SEO package and they'll just get loaded up with jargon and then once a month they'll say like, oh, like your site got 10,000 impressions or whatever. But yeah, like the average agency is not saying like, no. hey, you spent $10,000 and you made 30, here you go. No. Most of them. Yeah. And what most the of them fuck? also lock you into like a contract. So yeah. not only are you getting fucked over, but you are like contractually getting fucked <sighs> over as well when you realize it's not working. Yeah. You're like, how yeah. do I get out of this? And they're like, oh, you're in it for 18 months. You're yeah. like, sick. So for me, it's just coming in and, and teaching the stuff. Yeah. Teaching the people internally. Yeah. Going, this is how you do it. And if you want to still hire an external agency, watch out. But this, this, and that. Yeah. But also, this is how the new age of shit works. Like yeah. TikTok, for example. You can't be too anal about branding on here. Yeah. Just fucking just do something. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we, we, <laughs> we, we can't just do interviews the whole time. Like, But it fucking goes viral. Who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah. It's you actually can, better to do the same thing. It is. People always want to like mix it up, but you're better. It's, off, yeah. Like I want to watch like episode 472 of the Sev podcast. Yeah. Not like a Sev and goes binge the ice watch. cream episode number yeah. one, you know. My favorite analogy for this is you, you need to create a TV station, yeah, TV yeah, channel yeah, yeah. on every social media platform. So let's yeah. say TikTok. And then all of a sudden you put 100 videos out. Nobody watches it. Not many people. Yeah. So what you do then is you keep going. And then you have that one video that just goes viral and yeah. people binge watch all the rest of them. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you have a look at which ones had more people binge watch than the others because yeah. they either watched it again yeah. or when the algorithm goes, oh, fuck, people are watching this whole channel. Let's push it out again maybe. Yeah. And then you'll see different patterns of other videos starting to get more and more and more. Then you grab the 10% of the best performing ones, yeah. grab those templates and the styles and the themes and whatever you fucking did, redo them again. And then go again. It's snowball, 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 snowball. Yeah. But most brands don't have the patience or the, I don't know, they, they don't want to fucking commit to that, but they, they want to keep everything like on brand, it's this, and oh, it needs to be this aesthetic. I'm like, you say that you don't get to decide. The target yeah. audience decides. But you can only get the target audience to tell you if you put out shit. Yeah. And that's the problem I'm noticing. A lot of brands, they are fucking still pigeonholing. Yeah. Because that's all they know because that's all they're used to from marketing agencies. Yeah. They're like, all right, we need to sit down and we need to put sticky notes in. Who's your fucking favorite superhero? How do you do this and this? And then two weeks later, all right, we've got your content strategy. Here you go. That's $10,000. And they still haven't posted one video. Whereas me, I just be like, right, what's your brand? Great. This is how TikTok does it. You need memes, interviews, Point of views, yeah. fucking podcast episodes, and you need your CEO 
to just start talking about their success. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Go. Fucking go. Yeah. Right? And just do that. A week later, Sev, it's not working. I'm like, how many videos did you post up? One. What I'm do you like, think that number is? Is that 100? Like, so if you, you look- post 100 reels. Yeah. Like what is, the, what is the number? Like, okay, you're like, you're not- It's not about- Like, like there's yeah. nothing crazy about you. Yeah. But if you just did X amount of reels that were market okay. captivating, so, how many would you have to do? Where like the average Joe like would- um, like have enough hype where they could make like a yeah. million dollars a year. No, it depends on how much you pay attention. Yeah. So one of my most viral videos for my business that got me 20 leads yeah. organically and got me five bookings in that same week. Yeah. And they all told me that it came from that one video. Mm. That's how I measured it. Yeah. Um, $17,500 I made for that one week. One reel. One, one, one TikTok. Wow. And, but it took me. A year of branding and practicing and figuring it out and yeah. then clicking going, holy shit, I've got a wedding photography business and there's wedding photographers in America yeah. who've got TikToks and they're killing it over there. True. What is one of the most viral videos there and yeah. what are they saying? This one girl, she's going, here's what I bring to a wedding other than my cameras. Lint rollers, fucking sewing kits, Hollywood tape, tissues, pens. I'm like, I fucking do that. I'm going to make my own list. 200,000 views later, 91% of them in Australia, 20 inquiries in my inbox. I was fucking overwhelmed in that wow. shit. And that was organic, remember? Yeah. And then bang, bookings. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. And this was like- It was like proof of concept. I was hey? like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. And I just did it again and again and again. I went on Facebook groups. Yeah. I went on bridal- um, wedding chats, yeah. uh, bridal, uh, like wedding dress chats. Yeah. They're all talking about wedding dresses and stuff. And then I would come in there going, and I would make a video. I'd be like, this is how you pick a dress. Yeah, yeah. And the only reason I know about it is because I've done it. I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I wouldn't normally research about how to pick wedding dresses. It's yeah, not my department. 100%. But as a wedding photographer, yeah. I gave them value of going, here's what you have to consider when wearing this because of this outcome. And I'd yeah. be like, hey, if you get a really big bulky dress, remember you're wearing that thing all day. Mm. And by reception where you just want to dance and de-stress and eat food, you want a fucking little cocktail dress. Yeah. So you have two options. Commit to a light dress the whole day yeah. and just don't worry about it yeah. or have an alternative dress. Two dresses. I've seen two dresses work. I made that video and people were like, what the fuck? This is the best advice ever. Mm. Nothing to do on my TikTok, nothing to do in a wedding photography page, specific target i gave them value and they're like who are you yeah. like, what the fuck and i'm like, i'm Seb. i'm a wedding photographer bookings bookings yeah bookings but it's important to differentiate that you weren't saying like you Hi, weren't saying of... anything about your service no. exactly you were addressing their pain point exactly you're like you are doing this thing exactly like let me help you do that thing here's something that you know yeah. like you, you pro have probably thought about and because ultimately like you're selling to a feeling in the customer they don't give a crap like how many yeah. like like megapixels or no. your camera or whatever you and call the, it. And the thing the thing that they said the most is the reason why I hired you. Yes, you you give me value and something, but you yeah. just look organized. Yeah. And you, you look like you know what you're doing. And and even if I hired you as a photographer, yeah, I feel like I'm safer for my wedding day because yeah. I've invested in you because you're a good problem solver. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what else can you do for their business or mm. for, for, sorry, for the client that's over delivering? Mm. You market the over delivering, but you also market the outcome. Yeah. You market like, here's the result that you will get yeah. from me coming to your wedding. Yeah. Oh, your limo driver's not coming in. I got you. I'm going to fucking call them up. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, te yeah. technically the problem that a wedding coordinator solves, yeah. but that's what I tell yeah. in the videos going, yeah. I've done it before. I can help you, but here's why you hire a wedding coordinator. And then all of a sudden I get a wedding coordinator on my podcast or on my TikTok yeah. going back and forth. She or he gives value and I'm like, here you go. I actually had a wedding podcast. It's still available. It's oh, really? called Perth Wedding Minds. Perth Wedding. And I got up to 20 episodes before yeah. I got so fucking busy. Oh, really? Yeah, and yeah. people still find it and book me from that podcast. Wow. And the last episode was like 2021 or some shit. Nobody else has still done it yet. And I'm like, what the fuck? Isn't that funny? Like when you think about an ad, you spend money and then you make money like for one day. 
for one day. Exactly. But you make content and you make money forever. It's like yeah. the best leverage ever. But then once you have a and TV you just show, have Perth wedding yeah. podcast, people are still discovering Seinfeld, and the last the last episode aired in 1999. True. People right? are still reading meditations by Marcus exactly. Aurelius. He's exactly. been dead for like exactly. 2,000 years. Exactly. And then with yeah. campaigns, campaigns with these fucking ads, once the ad spend runs out, that video disappears. Mm. So that's why you go for organic content. Yeah. You don't just go, all right, here's the ad, cool, please buy. It. All right, we've got 1.2 times raw ads. All right, yeah. we made a bit of profit. Who the fucking – you just paid one times your – earnings yeah. to someone to, yeah. to, to give you point two. Yeah. That's not a profit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You and then by the time you paid that marketing agency, you're like you're just losing money. You're losing money based off of time. Yeah. So it has to be at least over two times row ass. Yeah. Three, three to make it really Ideally, worth your we work. aim for five, yeah. Yeah. yeah five. So tens. Anyway, I think I think this whole rant is great. It's gonna but be one last thing. Yeah. The opposite of this is like the people that are just scrolling like nonstop. Yeah. Because they're like, they're not actually creating any value. No, you got to figure out. They're just being like, yeah. their brains are just being like clogged with other people's advertising. Hey, yeah. don't attack me. Thank you. That's Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I want to help that too. Yeah. I want to have a scroll stopper for kids. Yeah, yeah. Because when kids come up to me, you say, I'm big fan, big fan. I'm like, why? Oh, your funny videos, your 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 interviews, your chicken wings and stuff. You're famous, I've heard kids oh, is say he to you. Famous, yeah. famous, yeah. So they like, I, li- I like you because you're famous. I'm like, ooh, that's not right. Yeah. You know, you like Kim Kardashian because she's famous, but what value does she give? Yeah. Keeping up with the Kardashians, who gives a fuck? Yeah. You know, like they're all over the place. They're not, you know, like yeah, they're successful. Yeah. But it's like a dream that's really unachievable. What if? Someone came in who came in and went, right, I was a school teacher and I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Mm. Here's how I did it. But I just need to get them to stop scrolling on me and go, holy fuck, Seb's Seb's new post just posted. He's about to drop some fucking bombs and I need to listen because I'm fucking wasting my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my ultimate goal. Yeah, yeah. Ultimate goal. Hard to monetize that because the algorithm favors the bullshit. True. It's fucking bullshit. It's like seed oils, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Seed oils, like, man. Seed oils. It's like the food industry. Yeah. Like, like, that's where YouTube thr- uh, like flourishes is. Yeah. Like the subscriber, they get notified, like you show up be, you know, like because you're loyal to Need to get onto to YouTube. Need to get yeah. onto YouTube. Like they, um, it's a much more community focused. Yeah, because I like – can you even learn anything in 30 seconds? You know, like I always wonder that. Like sometimes I'll have like a good scrolling sesh for like an hour. And I mean, I'm like, I'm like, is is any of this going to digest at all? <laughs> I mean, that... personally, I will find like useful tips. Like it could yeah. be like an editing tip or an AI like tool tip. Yeah. Um, something that I will save for reference for later. Like, um, but it's like other other ones would be, more conceptual it might be like business advice yeah. where you get like a quick like uh, suggestion that can help you like yeah, yeah. in the future but no long term like n- like you were saying no long form. Yeah, on, yeah. On TikTok. Yeah, like unless you kind of like learn something and implement it then it's yeah. mm. not actually that useful I think for the average person. I guess it's almost like if the content – if what you can learn, you can implement straight away, almost. I think yeah, works yeah, yeah. on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, it has to be has to be actionable immediately. Yeah. yeah, that's actually really challenging content to create, and I'm learning how to do it at the moment. Yeah, is here are three things you can do right now yeah. to get your um, business um, better than when you before you discovered yeah. this video. That that could be a cool content thing. Hey, yeah. like here's how you start a business. Like. Go to like go register your ABN right now. Register your business name. Like yeah. start a Stripe yeah, account. Yeah, exactly. I actually just, want. Just go it's buy hard to find that like content you've just for Australia. Started a business yeah. in like one hour. Yeah, exactly. Literally. It's not that hard. For me, for me, my my pillars, my three pillars are um, for kids is self awareness mixed yeah. with self esteem. Yeah. And then financial fitness, and then the art of pivoting. Oh, the pivot. The pivot. So when you fucking don't want to do the original thing you wanted to do yeah. throughout school and probably your university degree that got you nowhere, 
Um, or, or, or <laughs> in a, stuck on sick, just applying for jobs. Yeah, or in a job that you don't like anymore. Yeah. Hopefully you paid attention to the maths uh, financial fitness part where even in that job you learned how to invest properly. Yeah. And then now you're financially capable of pivoting into a more, you know, fulfilling job because your self-awareness evolves. Everybody's self-awareness evolves. Yeah, yeah. Everyone. Unless you're like the ultimate outlier that you've found your passion very early. Yeah. And not because your parents told you this is what you have to do yeah. or you've convinced yourself that your teachers were right. Yeah. Deep down inside, someone, everybody wants to do something that if money didn't exist, that's what they would do for the rest of their life. Yeah. Some people have found that early. Some people find that later. But when yeah. most people, when they find that later, cannot do it because they, they're in debt yeah. or they're, uh, they've got too many other responsibilities and they have to stay at their job no matter what. I do worry about that advice sometimes though because there is like the danger where people like us, we keep saying like, you know, like – basically leave your nine to five and go start your own well, business. That's, that's because, where financial fitness comes in. But Because it, it might get to a point where like, um, you know, there might be like some people that would just be an incredible, like they're like just born to be a really good carpenter yeah. or an electrician, but then they like listen to all these podcasts and end up like writing emails for like an e-commerce store or something. If that's what they love and, doing. And then in like 20 years, there's just like no, like nobody has like any like proper skills. <laughs> Everyone just has like internet skills. Everyone's like, I can edit TikToks, but like. <laughs> it's what I love doing. Yeah, I don't know how to hang a picture frame on my wall. Yeah. Yeah, true. I mean, I mean, the internet's giving you access to how to learn how to hang a picture frame on the wall. Yeah. But like if you really, really want to do something and – you have you have the access to learn how to do it. Yeah. If you don't take the next action, physical action, whatever it is to do it, yeah. then is it really what you want to do? Yeah, yeah. And then like I put this shit up all the time on Instagram. I'm like, hey, are you this person? Here are the literal actions you need to do mm. to get to the next level. Mm. You won't do it. Mm. And I get people messaging me going, I hey, hate Sev, I saw that. And that little thing at the end said you wouldn't do it. I act that motivated me to do it. And yeah. now I did it. Now I'm fucking smashing. Oh, true. I think that's, that's so true. Yeah. Like you, there's all like this fake ass, like motivation, like Gary V speeches and stuff. But I think what actually pushes you to do it is, is actually more like a darker force. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not yeah. like I'm feel inspired. I want to like help people like, Prove it. The stuff that like really fired me up was like, I'm going to prove every motherfucker wrong, you know? Yeah. Like that's the stuff it's that, hard to that, find that, fire, that really though. drives you. Yeah, it's hard to find that fire though. Yeah, like, well, especially in our like generation because – People are full of excuses. Well, and we all got taught to be so nice, you know? Yeah. Our whole generation is called like – just be nice to everyone and then let everything work out. And like the actual reality is like completely opposite. No. Yeah. Like you really have to just be like, I'm going to do this. And all your friends and your family say, like, that's a terrible idea. And you just have to be like, no, fuck you. I'm doing this. <laughs> and then like five years later, they're all like, oh, I don't know how you did that. Yeah. And then they, they all start like, I don't know, like all the people that told me not to start a business, they will ask me for like business tips, you know, you know? and they still haven't started a business. Yeah. And what happens if you um, – are we good, Ryan? You're running on thin ice. What, what oh. is it? What happened? Just battery. Oh, battery? Oh, true. Okay, we're good, we're good. Just uh, – fuck, how long have we been talking for? A while? Shit. Yeah, yeah over an hour and 15. Oh, yeah, no, we're oh, going sweet. good, we're going good. That's no, okay. Um, yeah, we'll wrap it up. But, um, yeah, thanks for listening all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, geez, it's been an hour already. What a conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Just uh, we've got some limits and uh, we'll work on them soon. But um, we'll do a, definitely do a part two. I definitely yeah. want to see your uh, your uh, business uh, being being sold. Yeah. If you're uh, if you've if you've already left it, you've already left it. Yeah. You know, make some money out of it. Um, but um, I think in summary, after all this, it's even though your friends ask you to do it and they still don't do it, it's not your problem. Yeah, just keep providing them the tools and the motivation um, for yourself. Mm to, you know, give them that, give them that push. Yeah. Don't preach, just provide that um, kind of, yeah, tools. And yeah, it, I mean, you just become the example. I exactly. Think, right? Preaching exactly. doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, preaching doesn't work. Just just show, lead by example yeah. and only give through oh, your own personal observation. Don't yeah. start fucking 
saying other shit. Yeah. And just like go to the gym, eat steak, like do really like regular stuff. That's exactly like, tan your ball sack. Success is so easy <laughs> if you just like do like really normal stuff yeah. consistently. Get your sleep in there and have some water, some good shit water. Do you actually like sun? Nah. <laughs> I should though. Someone come? follows that kind of all, really. Yeah. Yes. Can I sun on the back of the of the puddle and just like bro? Get, that's that yeah. could work. Could work. Just that. in the hills though, outside of the fucking the mainstream, people get cancelled. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, um, great note to finish on. Thanks for everybody for watching. Shout outs to Bright Tank Brewery as always for the uh, the the lager. This is voted uh, Australia's best lager as by the brewers of. Australia. I think I got that right. But anyway, good lager, good thanks. And uh, thanks for watching. You can find out more on Zach's stuff and his Pedal business. Pedalpath.com. Pedalpath.com and all the links and descriptions in bio. And as always, good thanks. Ah.